Welcome back. You're listening to another episode of The Todd Donald Show, a weekly podcast where artists and performers go to chat about nothing. Hosted by Canadian singer-songwriter Todd Donald. In this episode, I chat with singer-songwriter and musician Luke Cyrus Hunter. So ease your ass back into the slightly forgotten groove of the metaphorical workweek chair, because I know it don't thrill you, hope it don't kill you. Here we go. Our last guest will have been Samantha Mirandola. I've been reading the book, phenomenal. By the time you hear this, I'll have read maybe the whole book. (laughs) But sitting with me right now is a musician I've known for quite a while as Luke Hunter, and it's got this cool new middle name. It's not new. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me uh, the story of, of how you went from Luke Hunter from Stereola <laughs> that was on here in a different podcast in 2008 in this very basement? And now uh, you are right. solo artist. And Same just, guy. I'm <laughs> Same guy. And another thing that you can't see is that like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the album, but it looks like I'm showing him his own album. Yeah. Like, look at what you've done. I don't know. Say, say, say it in any way you want to say it what's been up since you were last on okay so well that's like we'll just say 10 years approximately um so lots of stuff yeah where do i begin um you can zip but we'll focus more on recent yeah work so at that time i was in a band called stereola and then we put out an album we did some shows and uh things kind of started to i don't know we just got a little bit burnt out maybe um i had a i was my daughter was born uh 2010 um kind of moved out of town for a little bit um and then fast forward like five years (laughs) or so back in kitchener kind of setting myself back up in the the uh the region and like starting to make more contacts again and booking shows doing a lot of solo work um, and then a couple years ago, um, Wayne Bond, producer, um, friend, um, we were just talking about kind of finishing some old tracks that we had never finished. And so yeah. we kind of started recording and finishing these old tracks. And then I wrote some new tunes and it turned into the album Renew, which I put out in 2017. Very good. That's yeah. the one I was flashing in front of in yeah. front of him, just so you know. <laughs> and that was just seemed like the whole process of making that was very smooth. Like everything, like ideas came when they needed to come, like people helping us to get certain things done, like the artwork and the graphic design and everything. It all just came together really well. And then we just kept going from there. We just kept writing and recording. So. Of course, the band stereo that was on here, uh, I, I want to say on here, it was a podcast I did called The Eye Top Lounge. You may have heard me reference it before. Stereola was a band with musicians and artists as well and producers of so many stuff. Wow. Good English, Todd. Uh, Wayne Bond, who was the drummer of Stereola, and Jason Walsh, who was the guitarist, Jay Dublevay, as he's known, I think, these days. Is it still? Jay? Yeah, I guess so. It's it's kind of, he has like a couple of names, but yeah, Jay Walsh or Jay Dublevay. Yeah. Yeah. Like these musicians are both present on this. If, if what you're mm-hmm. telling me is true, this is sort of in, in, in some kind of spirit within the dialogue of, of, of you and Wayne and me, like sort of like the, this almost part hybrid of the the stereola album that didn't get finished yeah but it organically surfaces as this finished product as luke cyrus hunter which is cool and the only reason i'm saying that or hinting at the idea that i think that is because you have the song on here called tequila rum and such Mm -hmm. which you Mm -hmm. guys performed like acoustically wayne instead of playing drums he was like patting his yeah that's right that's right yeah yeah and that was like the first song that i think that was the first one when we me and Wayne got back together where we took it, he remixed it and we took out a couple of things. Um, and I added like a new keyboard, uh, solo in there and, uh, I re sang it and then I redid like a, I came up with a different like backing vocal as well. Um, so yeah. And that was like kind of the starting point where it's like, okay, like I've always really loved this song. Yeah, me too. And so I want to write songs that are kind of like 
upbeat like this song and like you can dance to it and like kind of fun and like in that style and so that was kind of like helped set the direction for where we would go i suppose i didn't properly introduce at the beginning uh i'm talking with a singer songwriter <laughs> fantastic musician uh luke cyrus hunter i didn't i didn't preface with the show with that although anyone who clicked on the link might already know that but and i i didn't explain the name thing either so <laughs> <laughs> Cyrus is my middle name. Right. William Cyrus. Luke William Cyrus is my full name. Okay. But uh, I just, I was like, okay, well, there's a lot of hunters. And so I thought, you know, like Cyrus does have a, it's like kind of unique, not as much anymore with like Miley Cyrus. And <laughs> it has Billy a presence Ray Cyrus. in the music industry, they say. Uh. Cyrus Chestnut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I threw that in there just to make my name stand out a bit more. That That's was cool. kind of the only reason. Sounds good. Yeah. And anyone out there got a problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> For those who, who haven't heard the song, uh, Tequila Rum and Such, it does have like the vibe of If Smooth by Rob Thomas wasn't written and sung by a douche. <laughs> <laughs> but it has the vibe of that otherwise. Mu- musicianly, the fun of that song is all yeah. present. Yeah. And it has more interesting lyrics, in my opinion. Yeah, interesting. It's going from well, it's it's just it's it's got like that Latin rock. Yeah, actually, um, when we first wrote that song, uh, it kind of started off me and Jay sitting down together, and uh, I was thinking, or we were thinking, like a slower tempo and actually like a Latin feel, right. like a bossa nova or some kind of Latin feel, right. and we rehearsed it that way with Wayne, and then the day we went in to record it. He at the start he just started playing like messing around and he started playing like a disco beat right and we were just like okay <laughs> let's do that let's play the song with that beat so let's go and that's how it happened <laughs> Wayne did you that thing you do to key the rum and such it's like come on man it's supposed to be a slow Latin battle it's like fuck that ghost I'm gonna do it <laughs> I hope you like my impersonation of Wayne Bond I like knowing that like that song like this album it's a fusion of efforts. And okay. like a cornucopia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Before. true. Like at different times, recorded in different spaces, uh, with dr- different drums, uh, and different room sounds and different instruments and stuff. So yeah, definitely. And like myself, pretty being di- di- pretty diverse, like musically. Yeah. So yeah, like there are certain songs that definitely have a different sound. The very first song, the instrumental one, was one that I wrote kind of thinking almost like a theme song for the album to help try and tie it together right using like uh vintage keyboard sounds and modern keyboard sounds which is kind of like i'm trying to do that a lot yeah um throughout so like that was kind of like i heard as the theme song and to try and kind of tie it together and then it kind of goes into some of the older songs and then the second half of the album is all newer stuff and it ends with that the jam, which is like more traditional sounds, like it's just piano and organ yeah. and bass and drums. Um, so the, and that's pretty different in a way than the other rest of the album, like the Beastie Boys thing, where they have like the jam track. Like that's yeah. kind of like the jam track at the end to finish it off. So yeah, for sure. Um, the newer stuff is more, I'd say, like a little bit more cohesive. It's yeah. still like reaching into like different places for like inspiration yeah but the sounds are a little bit more consistent and it's all done like in the same time year frame right (laughs) in the thought process of like when you're making stuff like songs or is there an element of saying no to things because those things won't help sell because I feel like there are some people who are, no, they don't want to be a rock star, but they want to make music for a living. And certain mm-hmm. things creatively have to be said no to because it won't help you. Yeah. Oh, else. yeah, for sure. I'm not going to go off the deep end um, with what we're doing here. Um, You're not going to make like a whole brick in the wall or anything? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I like us putting in a solo or a sound where it's like kind of psychedelic sounding because there's so much like delay and. And I've layered the sounds and stuff, so it's kind of trippy. But at the same, it's done within the frame of like a pretty groovy pop song framework. Right. 
I'm always trying to keep everything pretty upbeat and danceable. So yeah, like I will be putting out other stuff with other projects like yeah. as well in the next year. And that's kind of like different genres. So like, yeah, with this, it is definitely focused. And like, I wouldn't necessarily say like for selling, but just to be consistent so that people kind of know yeah. what they're going to get. You have the, in- you definitely, I'm speaking for you, of course. Uh, you have <laughs> uh, the consideration of people enjoying listening to your music. Yeah, absolutely. Of, it's not of, just about me. You're not trying to, you're not trying to show off. You're not trying to. No go for the most complex thing you're you're just saying yes to like what feels good what creatively satisfies you but also can be enjoyed by other people yeah yeah (laughs) absolutely why didn't i think of that sooner (laughs) (laughs) with my own music i tend to hate it because i always went first with my own satisfaction what i do is like i'll often picture myself like performing the song while i'm writing it yeah yeah if I'm in a space with people and they're listening, is this going to be a song that I'm going to feel comfortable playing? Like, is it going to, I don't want to do something that's like too personal Mm. and then I'd be feel uncomfortable or like people feel uncomfortable listening to it. Right. (laughs) So yeah, like I try and picture like the, it being performed as well. There's another thing that you're probably aware of. Like you probably don't arrange 50 instruments that are necessary to pull it off live you're like yeah you 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 arrange for the music to be happening within what you're playing what the rhythm section is playing and what you're singing and that's Mm -hmm. like that that fills the song yeah definitely um try not to go overboard with it welcome to rock and roll school dipshits like (laughs) once we get like the drums and then like a couple keyboards bass and a rhythm guitar It sounds pretty full already. It doesn't need a whole lot more at that point. Mm -hmm. We really fine tune the tones so that like everything fits within a certain um, like EQ range so that it's kind of like filling out the sound spectrum from high to low so that everything is covered and I'm trying to make something groove. So I always like music where there's like different parts coming in, fitting in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Um, like jimmy smith whom i figure maybe you might yeah be aware of yeah like how things work together to create the groove so you don't need a whole lot you just need things working well together yeah well i mean i i I enjoy pet sounds but i also enjoy the white stripes pet sounds is an album kids by a band called the beach (laughs) boys who in that point we're trying to get elephants and stuff in the room for for session (laughs) i'm exaggerating Ten thousand didgeridoos yes (laughs) You know, you have the polar opposite of like that attempt at Phil Spector. You have like albums like Mm -hmm. All Things Must Pass, but like we need two drummers and (laughs) yeah, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) um, five five guitarists playing that one part. Um, And then you have the White Stripes, which is just vocal guitar drums. Yeah, and I find them both equally satisfying. Mm -hmm. It just depends Mm -hmm. on the intent and the the passion of the person making it. Yeah, and I mean, for that music, like the White Stripes, like. It just suits it. Like you wouldn't want it to be overproduced or, you know, right. have too many instruments on it. It's just like it's perfect for what it is. Yeah. So. What's that? I'm not saving the songs for the end and finally doing that inner insertion of a live off the floor performance that everyone else was already doing. Well, that's too little too late. Sorry to interrupt our conversation, but here's Luke Cyrus Hunter performing a song we'll be talking about later in the show, Old School Jam, right here on the Todd Donald Show. Let's go, hit the road, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, let's go, and George, oh, you got the vibe, ride that book and now every night, it's old school, it speaks to me, gotta roll with the punches like an MC, hi, 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 everybody dance to an old school jam, hi, 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 earth, wind, and fire, sign the fam. 
So keep it old school in an old school way Besides stupid saw sneaks, it's time to play Mike's a fresh west, Bill Bill the foe KRS one, boogie down that flow My philosophy is to make it tight And it takes two to make a thing go right Get down, show me how Music's my life and I finally found It's old school, it speaks to me Gotta roll with the punches like an MC Toronto, no surprise Jam to hot, ain't no lie The combo was the place to be Party all night, hey everybody And Giorgio, you got the vibe Ride that boogie now every night Hi, 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 hi Everybody dance to an old school jam Hi, 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 hi Earth, fire, sly in the fam the guitar like i'm i've played guitar for a long time but i'm not picking up the guitar every day mm -hmm. um there are times where i've been practicing and i feel like oh yeah i really know like the neck of the guitar really well i won't play it for a long time and then i have to kind of remind myself so i've kind of developed a certain style that suits what i do like i listen to nile rogers right from like the chic. Le chic yeah and like sister sledge and daft punk as well and he plays on some of that stuff. One of David Bowie's most successful albums, Let's yeah. Dance. Yeah, big time producer. Yeah, he produced that. And like he did a lot, like in the 80s, he did a lot of stuff like Duran Duran and Madonna even. And so his, I've listened even just to him talking in interviews about his guitar style where it's just like he plays these chugga chugga rhythms mm -hmm. and he'll only play like three strings or four strings at a time. He's not playing like a full bar chord. Yeah, and up higher on the neck mm -hmm. so just like that's kind of the style of what I'm trying to do like interesting like chord inversions yeah <laughs> less strings like not the whole guitar yeah, um, yeah you're not you're, we're not it's not folk territory it's like yeah it's exactly about, it's yeah it's in the place between rhythm and brush strokes of ear candy yeah exactly like it's ear candy like it feels good to listen to it it's not, rhythmic it's very rhythmic it's not um, trying to beat you over the head, though. It's not trying to beat you over the head. It just, like, really complements the song. Is complements. What yeah. Fan, you fucking found the, the most bitch and rad word for that. <laughs> I, I could have stopped at the word compliments it. Yeah. And I had to find, like, fairy dust. I, w I won't give an A-plus to the lyrics, but, like, the A-plus to the to the singing style of Ron Isley. But who's the other guy mm. in the Isley Brothers? The guy who was known for playing the guitar? Oh, God. Damn um it. So the Isley brothers are Ernie Isley. So Ernie, I would never would have known. I wouldn't have known that. I didn't even know that yeah. to begin with. So I'm I'm not I'm not like not accessing my brain on purpose because I didn't already have that information. No, I definitely didn't. I feel like Ernie is not a great name for <laughs> a musician either. <laughs> That's why it was all the albums say like the Isley Brothers featuring Ronald Ronald yeah. Isley. <laughs> I'm like, well, his name's Ronald. Like they they couldn't. Yeah. Have, what the fuck do you guys do? Do you guys Ron or have Ronnie a burger joint off the Route Ron 66? And Ron and Ernie. <laughs> they put out songs like uh, Between the Sheets, Twist and Shout. Yeah, of course, Twist and Shout. Yeah. It's your thing. Oh man, that's a great song. It's yeah. Classic. 
so I've listened to a little bit more of the Isaac Brothers and what they were doing in the 70s. I'm like, okay, this stuff is pretty iconic and known for its rhythm, its riffs, and its vocal styles. The lyrics, eh. But <laughs> I mean, well, I, like just those you just named like three or four songs, yeah. and like those songs have had a huge impact on this right today. Exactly. Still, they've been sampled by so many of the most well-known Puff Daddy songs, and mm-hmm. um, but like that's the second example that I can now think of. Mm-hmm. Be, you have now Rogers, and then you have Ernie Isley. Yeah, for those sure. two had to have like they ruled the seventies and eighties as mm-hmm. far as rhythm guitar in music that was made for dancing. Yeah. In music that was made to not beat you over the head or take you on a psychedelic journey. Mm-hmm. That that guitar that was meant to like yeah, make you true. addicted to the song like KFC's chemicals. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And like lyrically, um I either tend to go with something where it's like not too deep, just kind of fun. Or I might look at something to do with life and like my experience or like kind of looking at it bigger picture yeah but without never wanting to be like preachy or telling people how to think or what to do or anything like that i've always i would like to write like um a protest song of some sort or like some topical thing i'm trying to but i haven't done it yet right i don't know i don't want to it has to be right like what i'm saying you know like I feel like I don't mean like in moments of like rage where people write like a breakup song immediately after breaking up with someone. I mean, first of all, if you're writing a a breakup song immediately after breaking up with someone, you're not in that much pain. Yeah. Because people people who (laughs) are in that much pain, (laughs) they just want to lie down and not move. But I I feel like the best breakup songs are ones that fall out of people. And, you know, it's accompanied by an awareness of their own songwriting technique and not just raw emotion. The raw emotions in the memory, it's it's in what falls out, but it's not like present in your mood when you're writing it. I feel like any any good political song will be you're you're, you're more aware of making a good song than being like it's it's the mouthpiece of my rage and (laughs) like yeah even then i think i would try and be kind of subtle at times and not so overt with what i'm saying like if you like more mccartney-esque um yeah something that might make people think or 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 be like i wonder what he's talking about there and then maybe then they start thinking about it or they look up a phrase because i mentioned something pretty specific but i don't explain it and then they go they look it up and then they get into the topic or whatever like that's the kind of thing that i'm that i like to do just like a subtle reference here and there kind of thing i dig it yeah it says, you dig listen zach de la rocha chuck d and fucking john lennon you ass wipes yeah. are doing it wrong the whole time yeah right. no, I'm just, <laughs> I, I think there's good examples of both the subtle mm-hmm. political message and the the more overt again i there, there's no wrong answer yeah, exactly. If, yeah. if if your heart's in the right place when you're making the music, there's an audience for everything. So like your shit could totally suck and it doesn't matter. I'm like, <laughs> sorry, I don't want that to go the wrong way. I'm just saying, I'm just saying like if there's sincerity going in, right. if yeah. you're not just trying to get famous, mm-hmm. which they have these songwriting seminars. Mm-hmm. Scroll through my Facebook feed and like you get all these sponsored ads, how to place music in like syncing. Yes. It and like how to be a producer and like how to make money yeah. with music get, get a song on true blood write a hit song in two minutes or less like yeah. fuck off <laughs> the times they are changing i also don't like getting older and knowing that the mainstream music isn't for me anymore <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i know it's like i try and be open-minded and like um i'll listen to the radio and i'll try and find songs that i do like but it's getting harder and harder. And you have to try. I have, I do, yeah, and I have to try, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might be like, oh, I like that, whatever, like about the song. Like, I like that little two bar th- vocal thing there, or like the keyboard or yeah. the bass part. But like, it's pretty rare where I'm like, oh, I like that whole song from mm-hmm. start to finish. I, I, and I try, I try. I would be interested to know, like, what crowd, what scene was happening. Mm-hmm. that you were nearest when you were just starting to put yourself out there. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. It was in high school that I really started to, like I had been playing piano for a long time, but in high school, I kind of, I really started to like connect with music and like songwriting and started singing more. And that's when I started uh, playing guitar as well. 
my family moved up to Bracebridge in Muskoka at that time. So I was kind of like isolated a bit from f- friends. I didn't, you know, like I was in a new place. So yeah. spending a lot more time at home, just like playing music and getting into writing songs. And nice. there was actually a pretty good music scene there, an artistic kind of folk and rock scene my experience was just like with playing at the high school, like for the coffee house night, I think is what they called it, assemblies and things like that, and playing with some of the musicians in the high school. And I had a band and we would, you know, just like jam in the basement and like we just, that's how I learned how to play in a band and improvise. Yeah. And that's kind of like where I realized that that music was the thing for me, that that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. From there, I went to Humber College okay. and studied music. What were some of like the albums that, oh, right, were, right, right. that were like big among the, the people that you knew and, and you're in your own? Yeah. So it was a mix of like being influenced by like my parents' record collection and what was current and stuff. At that time, it was like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, The Tea Party. I have Mother Earth. But like I wouldn't say that all those bands were like an influence on me. Like okay. I liked some of them in a nostalgic way, kinda of like listening back to them now yeah. more than I even did at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like um even like older stuff, like I was I've always been a big Beatles fan. So I've always loved the Beatles and John Lennon and like Cat Stevens was like when I was just learning guitar, yeah. it was perfect because it's not that hard to play. So I was like, and it suited me vocally. So that was kind of like, I learned to play a bunch of Cat Stevens songs when I was yeah. learning guitar. But which one has um, fucking Bitter Blue on it? That's Teaser and the Firecat, right? Yeah, that is. That's yeah. definitely With my Moon favorite. With Moonshadow, yeah. uh, Peace Train. The Wind. The Wind, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And his vocals, like, he really can give it. Yeah. Like, and I'm trying to think of like actual current stuff at that time that I was listening to as well. Like Cake, for sure. Nice. I remember. Fashion Nugget. Yeah. Like doing some of their songs and like, who else? Um, just that 90s nice. stuff. And then um, you're in Humber. That's when I, I was studying jazz and like music. And um, I was definitely focused on keyboards at that time. And I was playing around the city uh, by the second or third third year i started playing around the city so yeah nice with some bands so yeah that was kind of like where i was kind of moving into like playing professionally so nice that was in one band where it was like almost in some ways similar to what i'm doing now it was like jamiroquai influenced but also like medeski martin and wood was a big influence okay for me at that time like jamming organ and keyboards and funky stuff yeah so that was always i really liked that that band are you like a guy who do you are you on reddit like in the music communities on reddit at all no it's just up here in my okay because <laughs> like i'm just starting to get into it and there's some really interesting like music communities on there okay um people like recommending stuff or people sharing their music is this like pinterest for boys or something um <laughs> have you heard of reddit yeah, I have. It's like all these subcategories, right? Where you right. join a group and then there's discussions and you contribute in some way. So it's like a conversation. Okay. And people saying, you know, I'm really into this band. Who else can you recommend that's in the same style? And it's not all about like obvious choices. Like right. it's about like indie bands and stuff like that. So you can, I'm just sort of getting into exploring it, but like right. there's some really interesting. Um, it's a really interesting way to like find new music. Once again, interrupting a nice conversation with Luke Cyrus Hunter and I is the amazing Luke Cyrus Hunter performing Might Be More here on the Todd Donald Show. Come on, be 
your vibe Good vibrations magnify All that's around you Be your vibe High school, I was like a songwriter, and then I studied jazz so intensely, and I stopped writing songs for like three or four years. And then I got into playing in bands where they were writing songs, so that kind of got me into writing again. Yeah. And then I went and worked on a cruise ship. That was a whole other thing. And then came back and started playing with Shania Twain tribute band. <laughs> so like I've been like all over the map, and so I have been times where I was writing and then I would get away from it because yeah. of whatever I was doing. But I've always loved the, uh, the process yeah. and like the creative process. So now I feel like I'm doing what I love, like writing and recording. Yeah. Um, and I do solo shows and stuff pretty often and I get to go and play, like I do weddings and stuff like that just for, you know, for gigs and whatnot. But yeah, like right now, um, I'm more than halfway into making an album with Wayne Bond. So um, if we could talk about that, maybe. Yeah, no, absolutely. We put out a video uh, in July. And actually, that was like my first experience where like I had a lot more control over making the video. Like I actually shot it with my daughter and my wife was there too. She did a little bit of the filming, but I shot it in Toronto and we were like went around to a few different places like Nathan Phillips Square and like in front of the horseshoe and like I wanted to get some of these iconic places because the yeah. song is called Old School Jam. So yeah. um, I wanted to feature some of those places and I'm actually, the song I've referenced like tons of places and things and right. Toronto. So like... Is, want, it, is it an ode to Toronto, the song? Or it's like it, an ode or to... Or the video, I mean? Yeah, it's, it's an ode to Toronto and old school music, right. especially like some of the videos that I remember from like when I was a kid that were like so fun and just like when hip hop was kind of like new and like it was like pop at the same time like Young MC and like Bust Bust yeah. a Move and like um, Maestro Fresh West and like all that kind of stuff yeah. like it's a tribute to that kind of music. Beastie Boys Root Down video sort of came yeah. to mind. Yeah, like street maps and shots of the subway, mm -hmm. shots of the city, mixed with some dancing, some lovely yeah. dancing by yeah. your daughter. That's right. Yeah, um, that 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 was like it 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 brought like I had this thing in mind. Like I already liked the video before I saw it, and yeah. the video is really cool. 
Can you describe the lyrical content? Because I found yeah. it really fun to listen to. It was actually a really neat process writing that song. Like from the start, I was like, okay, I want to write like a party tune. And I wanted it to be really simple, like musically. And so I was listening to um, Boston Move by Young MC and yeah. Rob Bass. Um, it yeah. takes two. Yeah, yeah. Everything go right. And I was like, right okay. About. No, that's a different song. <laughs> is that it? it takes two to make a thing go right. Yeah. But is it is it the one that starts off with like, right about now? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there's like a kind of a dark yeah. <laughs> intro. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Okay, so this is really interesting. At first, I was like going to try and write a song about all these clubs, dance clubs around the world. Yeah. And that didn't happen. But like, I had a, my paper out and I'm listening to songs and Young MC. And then like, it was my youtube or spotify was like suggesting songs right so i listened to a song roll with the punches which is a young mc song from the yeah. same era and it's got like a cool piano riff in it so i wrote that down i'm like roll with the punches young mc i wrote it on the paper mm -hmm. and then i was just listening to like suggested videos and there was this one guy called d train and he had a song called you're the one for me and i'd never heard it before i was, I was like okay this is kind of cool i like the groove of it I wasn't like crazy about it, but I'm like, I like the, the groove of it. So I wrote that down. D train. You're the one for me. Roll with the punches, young MC. And I didn't even think about it. And I wrote down a bunch of other songs and I put it away and I went away and did other things. And I, the next time I came down to it, to the song, I looked at the paper and I'm like, holy cow. Like it's like perfect. Yeah, yeah. D train. You're the one for me. Roll with the punches like young MC. Like it already I'm like, okay, this is like the opening line there's, to the song. It's kismet. Yeah. So then I kind of started like collecting references, like songs. Um, and then I started throwing in Toronto references. I asked people on Facebook, where's a place you would go to listen to old school music? And people were like recommending places or like past or present. So I included the Elma Combo and the Wrecking Yard. And then I just mentioned like all these artists that I remembered that were like trying to fit it into the same category like maestro balbiv devoe like all these references and just kind of tied it all into a song so and then i kind of threw in some references to 70s groups that were like would have influenced like 80s groups yeah yeah giorgio Moroder, who's a keyboard producer yeah earth wind and fire sly and the fan family stone yeah so i mentioned those people as well because they would have influenced like the 80s vibe that I was going for. So. Nice. It helps the listener, but without, you don't have on your hands what would count as like an educational song. Like right. This isn't like the, this is how to break day. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's um, not instructional or anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an homage that inadvertently invites the listener into a conversation about music with you. It, it invites the listener to know about music that you cherish. Mm -hmm. And it invites the listener to, to know something that they might not have before about what made hip hop and dance and funk and and R and B so great. Yeah, exactly. Like, and it, yeah, it was just like a fun period of time for music. Oh, great time! And like, I'll and I was I like I literally was like doing research like with the songs and like I even I'm like, what were those like sneakers? Like, what's like I mentioned uh, Superstar Sneaks, which was like the um, I think it's the Adidas ones that like Run DMC would have worn at that time. So I mentioned that in the song and everything. Like, yeah. So I I, I went like pretty deep. There's a lot of references in there. <laughs> I'd stop what you're doing <laughs> and go watch that fucking video and then come back. Welcome back. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna supply a link for that video. Cool. But as far as like people being able to just like. Uh, Mm -hmm. to just play the music where, where, where can mm -hmm. the listener get the music uh lots of places um if you just want to listen if you just want to listen like an asshole no you can, I, I didn't I, mean <laughs> i'm on youtube there's videos and stuff but yeah like spotify um i have a soundcloud page i am set up with like the distro kid thing so it's like right it's on all the the platforms all the it, worldwide did distribution yeah. yeah worldwide worldwide <laughs> i like how they use that term to make an appeal yeah like for for indie pool it's like i went with them for a couple albums and they're like you get yeah with it with this you get worldwide digital distribution and it sounds so cool how <laughs> yeah. could you say no 
by the way, Apple's going to take like 99% of whatever. People yeah, exactly. Buy on yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I, yeah. I, dude, I, I love your music and I appreciate you letting me take the journey that this conversation mm -hmm. uh, went in. It's been fun. Via interruptions and such. <laughs> via interruptions yeah. and such. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it fits the same. I'm going to give you now, the listener, the third performance and go check out this motherfucker's music online. You got the links. Chances are most of you come to the podcast episodes by looking at my Instagram and not listening, but this time listen and um, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see that he's been on the show before and maybe I'll put up a vault episode with Stereola from 2008. But anyway, Luke, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm it's saying great. that very hostly, right, but I also we are it. shaking hands. We are shaking hands. <laughs> And for the last live off the floor performance by Luke Cyrus Hunter is Luke Cyrus Hunter performing Got Me Reeling. Not with a G, with an apostrophe, baby. Enjoy. Searching, searching, but what she provides is just what I'm needing. Help me now, I can't fight this feeling. My baby's loving has got me reeling. All my life I've been waiting, waiting. Every day we're anticipating, cause tonight, my love. this feeling my baby's loving has got me reading For all my life I've been waiting searching but what she provides is just what I'm needing whoa help me now I can't fight this feeling my baby's loving has got me reeling Day we're anticipating Cause tonight My love Yes, tonight We'll see Who we'll be Thank mm -hmm. you.
Thanks for listening to another episode of The Todd Donald Show. Starring, produced, and edited by Todd Donald. The piano music in the rap is by J.P. Sunga, who you can find at jpsunga.com. The theme music is Mackie Alkino by William Chernoff. Find him at chernoff.band. And I'm Milo Axelrod, Todd's favorite bar none human voice. And I'm not bragging, he wrote this. If you'd like to hear more of my voice, check out my podcast, Describing a Rock, in which I describe some rocks. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. Please support The Todd Donald Show by sharing it with anyone who might enjoy it. Follow and interact with at Todd Donald Show on Twitter and Instagram. And if you feel like going the extra mile on iTunes, please subscribe, rate, and review, preferably in its favor. Have a great day, friends. Thank you.